Hi everyone, welcome to a godly home. Let's get some gardening done. Well, some gardening done indoors. <laughs> Here is my indoor planter and this is the flag that my viewer Becky sent me with the blue tick hound on it and I put it in here because um, when I have a plant started in this planter Sloopy plucks it out but something like this kind of distracts her from plucking it out and right there I have three Tom Tom tomato plants started these will only get to be six inches tall. So I'll keep you posted on that. So this is my Big Bertha green pepper plant. You probably remember this if you've been watching the channel for a while. But if you're new to the channel, I will tell you about it. This plant is three years old. I bought it originally at Home Depot. And I decided to do an experiment because it seems like in the state of Maine, by the time I grow a pepper plant from seed, it's just getting to where it's producing good and the summer is over. And when I went to buy this one from Home Depot already grown, the cost of it was so to me ridiculous that I didn't ever want to have to pay for one again. So I decided that year I was going to plant it in a bucket and I was going to try to bring it in in the winter and see if I could just get some green peppers off of it a little longer into the winter. Well, what ended up happening is it stayed fairly green that first winter, but then the next spring it grew a whole new fresh shoot and blossomed. And I was like, wow, so that is what I've been doing with it. I just bring it in every winter and then the next year it grows a whole new shoot and oh, it does its own thing. And now that you've seen how tall this is, and you've seen how healthy and nice this is, I'm gonna get you closer so I can show you how I care for it. Okay, so we have the original plant, which is right here, okay? So what I did is when that original plant stopped producing, I broke it off. And then this is the next year's plant. And when that stopped producing, I broke them off. And then here is another one. Okay. And it, I just, when they stop producing, I just break them off. Now this one, let me get you up a little bit. This one is last year's. And this one is last year's, and I won't be breaking that off until it stops being green, okay? But we have right here, this is starting to produce green, but we've got all of this that's dead. And I'm going to just snip all of that right back. And then down in here, right down in here, I'm going to cut all of that back. I've actually got a bud right there, so or it looks like it's going to start a new thing, so I won't cut right there. And then I've got this stalk. This stalk right here. And it runs right down. Let me show you. Okay, it 
it runs right down like this. And there's nothing growing out of that stalk up to a certain point. And I will just... I should have gotten my pruning shears for this. I don't know why I just grabbed these scissors, but the scissors are doing the job, okay? And that's what I do. I keep it trimmed like that because that is what keeps it producing. And then you can see the bucket dirt is down a ways. And I'm going to fill this bucket back up to a reasonable height and I have got some of the miracle Grow potting soil mix here okay I've got it upside down guys and I don't want to pull on it because it is kind of heavy I've got it arranged on the table where it's going to work for me to work from it but I'm just going to go ahead and top that off and I will keep you at a level here where you can watch what I'm doing. Now, those Dollar Tree plant spikes that I picked up, let me go get them so I can show you. Okay, as soon as these came out into Dollar Tree this year, I poked two or three of those down into here because I had been in that bucket for a whole year, well, you know, a whole year without adding any additional whatever to it at that point. Because I just add to it in the spring. And it had been in the bucket a total of three years. So I poked a couple of those in there, even though it says it's for house plants. And that made a big, big difference. And I won't be adding any more of those to it because once I top this the rest of the way off with this nice miracle grow soil then that will take care of what it needs for this year unless it starts to look like it's really pale or something like that then I could add some more compost or something to it all right I can't really do that very well around the camera so I'll be back Okay, that's about as high as I can go with that without getting on to this little one down here that's trying to start a branch. And I don't really want to get so much in there that all my leaves are laying in the dirt. I'll just give it a good amount of water and put it right back in the sunshine. Before I do, though, I've already got a little pepper started on this indoors and I had a little blossom here too but I knocked that off today trying to get the extra soil in there and, and get it trimmed up but if it blossomed once it'll keep blossoming okay the next thing going on here are these green onions or scallions or whatever these were my misfits ones and I put them in the window a while back in just a cup of water and then I uh, added them to this McDonald's cup with some potting soil when I got a chance and they're growing like crazy they're doing super good but there's a lot of dried crumbly areas on them that I want to get pulled back and they're also growing a ways too far you know out of the cup without any soil there so I'm going to add just a little bit more soil to that cup and I've only bought the one bunch I've just been using these ever since I bought them I actually am going to uh, trim that one right off and trim this one right off and I can use these whenever with cooking but that will get those from flopping around those ones are kind of a little floppy all right and we'll just give them a little touch of water 
and they can go right back in my kitchen window. Okay, now this next one, this is really bad. This is my aloe plant, and my husband kept getting bad frostbite on his hands this winter, and he kept having to use this aloe and it was already outgrowing its pot before that happened <coughs> and then it's literally been chomped to bits from having so much taken off of it during the whole frostbite thing i'll include a picture of one of his little frostbite incidents so i want to go along and i want to trim Anything that doesn't look good to me off of this plant. What do you guys do with aloe other than sunburns and frostbite is there another use for it okay i think all in all that's pretty good and what i did was i bought this red pot that matches my kitchen into dollar tree i got it during the grocery haul there that i did for the cooking videos but that was the only thing I'd picked up that day other than food, so I hadn't showed it. And I'm going to go ahead and just get this transplanted into this bigger pot, and then that can set in my kitchen. Okay, and I'm going to work all the dirt in and around. We're getting there. All right, let's give it a little water. And I'm gonna give it one of those plant spikes. I'll get one. 
wants to keep popping out of this pot because it's been growing out of that little pot for so long. I'll give it this one of those. Okay, and there's that one. It looks much, 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 much better. I had a couple little, little pieces here fall out. I'll poke them right in. That's how I actually started this plant in the first place. Um, one at the Grange had gotten spilled all over the floor and we were in there for art and it actually laid on the floor all weekend. And I got asked if I wanted a piece off of it. So I took a piece home and then did that. All right, now, oh, there's another little one. So now in this pot, I've got my celery started from the Misfits Market celery. And I've just had that soaking in water. And now I'm gonna pull back all of these nasty old stalks. Just as close as I can to that root. Whoops. Okay, I'm just going to keep going. Okay. And I'm going to keep taking. Don't take that all the way back to just where it's new growth. All right, so I got this little celery plant and I'm gonna go ahead and get that in this little pot and this can go on my windowsill in the kitchen. wish you guys could see this wicked mess I'm making here in my living room. It's just ridiculous, but... Okay, there that is. I need to wipe down the outside of the pot, but I won't do that on here. I won't use up the time. You guys can imagine me wiping out, wiping the outside of the pot and getting this all cleaned up nice. Okay, there is that one. And then this can go into compost. Okay, now the next one that I want to start today is going to be a cantaloupe plant. The seed that my aunt sent me. So let's go ahead and get some dirt in there. Oh, if you're wondering what I'm planning in, this is starter pots. They're just little flexible pots. I got them someplace dirt cheap on clearance or something for 
a little enough, and I've been planning in them for years, and I just keep recycling them because they're flexible enough that I can just um, get the plants out of there without shredding them, and then I have them over and over and over. Okay. I'm going to snip just a little hole in the edge here. And I want to do one, two, let's say three seeds, just in case some of them don't germinate. Well, you know, that one looks pretty good. I'll do four seeds in this pot, and we can always pluck a plant and leave a couple of the strongest. All right. Then what I do is I just fold that over and staple it. Okay, and we'll give that a water. And we'll mark this with a Sharpie marker. And then I'm just going to put a note that it's from Sherman, Maine. All right. As a little bonus, this is my amaryllis. And after it stopped blossoming the first time, I broke the old stalk back and it grew another one. Okay. Thank you for watching. There will be more of these videos as I get stuff going. And I hope you like this. Bye.